Let's say you're a Weddell seal pup. You're born on top of the sea ice in Antarctica, and you spend a lot of time with your mom in the first 45 days or so. You're nursing, getting fat on your mother's milk, you're learning how to swim with your mother's help, and perhaps you're learning about how Weddell seals behave by watching your mom and other seals interact around the colony. This is not an easy place to start your life. This world of ice, snow, intense cold, winds blow hard, storms are ferocious. But in the colony, you're safe from predators and mom stays with you 24 seven. All you have to do is lie beside her, drink her rich milk and get bigger every day. Before long, she encourages you to come below the ice, to swim and explore the underwater world, and find your way back again to the surface, where you nurse some more and keep growing. Life is good. But then, when you're only about seven weeks old, she leaves you on your own. From now on, it's up to you whether you survive or not. Odds are, probably, you won't. If you're a female and you manage to stay alive in this tough place for the next seven years, and you grow to full size, which is nearly the size of a horse, and then have a pup of your own, you'll be among a select and special group. You'll be lucky to make it. But perhaps it's not just luck. Perhaps who your mom is can also make a big difference in whether you become a mom yourself or die at an early age. So 80% of the pups that were born this year, say we have 600 pups born this year, 80% of those are not gonna go on to do anything for the population. They're gonna die during adolescence before they ever get there. So every one of these mothers that we have lying out here is pretty exceptional in having gotten into that top 20% pool that goes on to produce some young and contribute back into the population. But even within that 20%, well, there is a lot of variation. Their size, their weight, how old are they, how many pups they've had before, how they behave toward their pups, and many other factors. Project scientists are studying what these differences can mean to the pups surviving and having pups of their own. For decades, the project has tagged nearly every new seal pup in the study area to know how many are born every year, who their moms are, how much some of the pups weigh at birth, at the mid-nursing period, and then at weaning. They're also learning how much some of the moms weigh when they come in and give birth, and how much weight those moms lose during the nursing period. The scientists are also measuring how much time some of the pups spend in the water, where they learn to swim, how to search for food, and other important skills. So when we talk about the importance of mothers, we think about mothers having several kinds of features. And a couple of the features are permanent fixed features of the mother. And those would be things like, what year was she born? What birth cohort was she a member of? Some birth cohorts are better than others. Perhaps they were born into really good environmental conditions and they get a head start in life, sort of being born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Another feature of a mother that varies from one female to the next, but is a permanent feature of a mother once she does it, is what age was she when she first started reproducing? We have good evidence that mothers that start breeding earlier in life tend to be the better females. They're somehow able to get their bodies in great condition and uh, create pups and then take care of those pups starting earlier in life. Again, getting some kind of head start in life uh, as, a, as a good breeder early on. Other features of mothers are quite variable throughout their life and change throughout life. So one of those would be, did you have a pup last year or not? And some of these females that we have laying in these colonies took last year off and might be in a little better condition. Other females had pups last year and are trying again this year. So maybe their body's a little bit taxed and they haven't fully recovered from that event last year. How many times have you bred in your life so far? Have you bred many, many times? Your body might be uh, burning out a bit, or perhaps the fact that you've bred a lot suggests that you have some superior 
uh, genes or some superior knowledge about how to find food and get in great body condition. Another feature that's clearly changing uh, in a very systematic way is how old is the animal. So we keep track of the animal's age. Any animal that we tag as a pup and it returns to these colonies for us to observe again, we know its age. And so we're finding a lot of interesting information about how these animals' ability to make big pups changes with life. Younger mothers tend to have smaller pups at birth and they tend to wean smaller pups. Old mothers, mothers in their especially late 20s, also have smaller pups at birth, but interestingly, their pups tend to be the biggest at weaning. That sort of indicates that there might be some terminal investment feature with these older moms late in their life, that's the terminal part. The oldest mothers, despite making small pups at birth, put a lot into those pups and actually have the biggest pups at uh, the time of weaning. Now the prime age mothers, those in their teens, they tend to make big pups at birth and quite big pups at weaning, almost as big as the oldest age mothers. Almost all pups in the study area are born from mid-October to mid-November, the beginning of summer in Antarctica. Early births and late births are only about a month apart, but even that seems to make a difference. Look around these colonies at the current time. We're in early November. We have some pups who are almost ready to wean. We have pups that are molting. They might be approaching 30 to 35 days old. We have a few that were born the very earliest. And then in here, we also have some pups that are very young, maybe only born yesterday or just last night. There is evidence that pups born early in the season have a better chance of survival than those born a month later. What sort of mom is more likely to give her pup an early start? One factor seems to be her age. The earliest born pups, those born in say mid-October, those are born typically to mothers who are prime age and who took last year off. So they skipped last year and therefore perhaps got into breeding condition, big body condition a little bit earlier in the season and really got that pup ready to be born a little bit earlier. Then the next group would be prime age mothers who had pups last year. And then our first time mothers and our very old mothers, so the very young and the very old, those tend to have pups that are born the very latest in the season. We don't yet know whether birth date is related to the ultimate fate of the pup at becoming a great mother itself, but we do know that the birth date tends to be related to the survival. And then there's swimming. Some moms will get you into the water early and take you often. Others don't. Is it better to be the Weddell seal version of a couch potato nursing the weeks away, or to be a frequent swimmer? Project scientists are studying whether there is some kind of trade-off. Do you gain more weight by swimming less in the cold seawater? That might be a good thing, but on the other hand, swimming more could mean that you gain skills to help you survive the tough years ahead. One of the things we see mothers do a lot is get in the water and beckon to the pup with some calling and with holding nursing. And then eventually pups like this at about two weeks of age will start to swim. And when they do that, we'll hear pups bawling in there, sometimes looking like they're having difficulty coming back out. And mothers will come in and rake the ice. You can see various ledges in this ice here. And the mothers will make these very smooth ramps, testing those over and over again. The other thing they do when they're swimming with their pups, especially early on, is they will be very, very close to the pup. We occasionally see mothers push the pups up out of the water to help them get back out. So pups are getting in here, swimming anywhere from one to 10 times a day, and sometimes anywhere from an hour or two a day to up to 15 to 16 hours a day. To find out how much they swim, scientists attach small tags on some pups that sense when the animal is in the water and how long it stays there. Then they monitor the weight of those pups to learn if there's any connection between time swimming and weight gained. Years from now, they'll be able to learn if it made a difference for the pups who survive. Is it better to swim a lot? Is it better to swim a little? Some intermediate kind of Goldilocks amount where the intermediate is just right and then eventually, many years from now, seven or eight years from now, we'll learn which pups 
are the best at surviving. So far, the best of all, the champion mom of all the moms in the study, was 31 years old when last recorded in 2014. She was nursing a new pup, the 22nd in her long career. Tag number 1929C, she was both the oldest mom ever recorded and the most prolific. Since 2014, she has not shown up in the study area, but her daughters have. Here's one of them, 8731A, already 26 years old, with her 17th pup well on her way to being an outstanding daughter of an outstanding mom. And this veteran, 0550C from a different lineage, she's 27 years old, shown here with her 19th pup. Altogether in 2017, there were 39 moms in the study area older than 20. As a group, those 39 moms had already given birth to a total of 452 pups. These are the super moms. If we were to describe at this point what we think is the ideal mother, what we think you'd like to have if you were one of these pups is you'd like to have a mother that's in her prime. You probably want a mother that's about 16 years old, somewhere in there, and who's had a number of pups before. She started having pups early, and she probably took last year off so that she's in extra good body condition. That would be sort of the ideal mom because that mom's gonna be able to put a lot of her body resources into making you a nice, large, healthy pup at birth. She's gonna have her body in great condition from having the year off and being in her prime so that she can put a lot of resources into you. And she's probably able to get in the water and use really strong, good teeth to rake the ice and get you good exit holes. And so she's probably able to really help the pup through the swimming period. And so that would be kind of the ideal mother. Using all of these data collected over the decades, coupled with newer, more powerful approaches to statistical modeling, scientists will be able to learn more about these characteristics of Weddell moms. And we'll gain an even better understanding of how maternal investment in pups relates to variations in Weddell moms and variations in the environment. So far, this long-term population study has learned one thing for certain. If you're a Weddell seal pup, who your mom is can make an important difference in whether you will be among the exceptional 20% of female pups to survive and return to the study area to have pups of your own. <laughs>